Good morning, this is Tom Erdo from Secular. Uh, I'd like to give a warm welcome to the CalSOS team. I'm here to give you an overview of the Secchion AI XDR platform. First screen we're looking at here is the executive dashboard. This gives you a high level view of everything that's happening in your environment. At the bottom, the devices you're here getting data from, in the middle, uh, data flowing into and out of your environment, so forth. The three boxes on the left represent the first, the number of events that have been captured over the last seven days, over 4 billion pieces of information from logs, flows, user information. Below it is 9.8-ish million threat indicators. Those are things that we've seen that, that might become part of an event, a failed login, a blacklisted site access, a new scan. <clears throat> At the bottom is the actual number of alerts that were generated for over that seven-day period. So 28 alerts, four alerts a day. That's very manageable. That's the power of the system, ML and AI engines, and the correlation taking all those, that, all those events, parsing them down to threat indicators, and then turning them into actual alerts where you need to take action. Let's go take a look at uh, log flow collection status. Pull that up. Let's go to uh, larger count here, let's do 50. So what you're seeing here is all the different log sources, flow sources that the system is ingesting. Uh, this is actually where we can be complementary to your existing Splunk system, where it's a log collection tool. We're collecting logs, flows, user information. We collect from all your different cloud environments. Uh, AWS in particular, I know is what you use. And that's an environment we have deployed in many instances. In addition to, to your log system, we can also, your, I'm sorry, your Splunk system, we can also complement it in other ways. We have uh, rules built into the system. You don't have to do any rules creation. So that can hopefully save you significant time and money. Uh, as I said earlier, Splunk collects logs. We're collecting not just logs, logs, flows, user information. All of that helps us create a, a much deeper, richer picture of what's going on in your environment. Let's us build behavioral models for every host, we're not signature based. We, we catch things based on behavior. So therefore we're gonna catch it early. Lastly, we have unsupervised MLA and AI, which can hopefully really cut down the number of false positives you're gonna see. We get great feedback from our partners that they have very few false positives. That means your team has to spend a lot less time looking into things that, that aren't actually gonna to need to have any action taken. Let's go look at alerts. Okay, here you got a high level snapshot of the alert page. At the top, you get a, a, just a graphical look at different types of alerts you know, and how many are open by severity, different types of closure, open, remediate, and so forth. <clears throat> Below that, you're seeing the actual open alerts. I wanna go look at a longer period of time here. So I'm gonna go 60 days. I wanna look for a particular type. So potential malware infected hosts. So I come here and I can see alerts that, that fit that profile. Again, you see here, you get a time frame, high level overview, what particular uh, information was relevant in the alert, the user and so forth. Let's go, we can dig into every one of those and get all the details. So here I've dug into one of the uh, potential malware infected host alerts. Uh, one thing I wanna highlight here is this origin page. So a uh, tab. So what you see here is what particular information was used in this alert <laughs> to help us generate it. In some cases, it's user information. Some cases it's, it's log information. In some cases it's flow information. And, and in many cases, it's a combination of those. So this actually shows you which types of data were used for this alert. Across here, you're seeing the uh, MITRE techniques. MITRE is a corporation that created a guideline for classifying and describing cyber attacks. We've incorporated this into our alerts and we're showing you here in red the, the actual techniques that were used in this alert. Down here, what we actually are showing is the all of the activity that was correlated together in software by our machine learning and AI and, and other engines all the things that were correlated together to, to tell us, okay, there's an alert here that needs to be have action taken. You can drill down on any one of these. Let's look at blacklisted site access. This is all of the ones that were listed. You can look at every one. You can drill into any one. And here you get a real deep look at exactly what was going on with that particular instance. Uh, source IP, destination IP, here you can actually see the 
the source that told us which that this was actually a blacklisted site. And at the bottom here, you always get the miter techniques that were used in that element, in that thread indicator. Okay, so let's go back. Here we're getting a graphical representation so of this host over time. Back here in January, you saw some activity, some blacklisted site accesses, but not enough to, for us to say that there's anything malicious and action needs to be taken. Here again, another month. Now here in this month, we actually saw enough that we raised our confidence and severity score and said, there's an alert, you need to take some actions. And you could actually drill down on this. You could, I could click on it and go deeper. And so you could keep drilling down to get to the actual day and maybe even a minute so that an analyst can get a very quick snapshot of what happened. Once you get here, if you've looked in and you decide it's time to take action, you go up here and you click the remediate button. You can go in and you can say, all right, let's see what devices are available for mediation. Here I have a sonic firewall. Let's click that one. Let's do an EDR, second EDR. Give it a quick comment. Okay, now I can go in and actually see what's going to happen. Here it's showing me the exact rule it's going to push to the, sec the sonic wall firewall. So you can actually take a quick look, validate it, it looks good. But it's going to do that. As soon as you push the button, it's going to push that rule out, block access to that blacklisted site. Uh, for the EDR, we'd get a different set of instructions, but anyway, everything you selected, you could see what it was going to do. You come down here, you push the update button, and the system is now going to take those actions, and you're going to remediate that, that attack. And in most cases, long before it ever gets to the point where it's actually hurting anything. Uh, let's go back now. Let's go over and take a look at something called auto-remediation. So that was manual remediation, where I actually took a look, I pushed a button, and it happened. Here, I can set up the system to say, okay, from now on, whenever you see a particular type of alert, uh, I can say potential malware infected host, like I was just looking at. I can say, from now on, I want to remediate that automatically. I don't want to wait for a human to look at it. I can, I can set that to happen all the time. I can set it to happen after hours. I can set it to happen for a certain day of the week. So it's very programmable. And you can do this for any type of alert. Down here, you see a bunch of different playbooks that have been created for you know, different confidence scores, different um, severities, different type of alert, and you can create your own. So those are all in the system. If you wanna go in and create your own, let's just pick one here. Here you can see the, uh, the details of a particular playbook. Get the ransomware alert, check severity and so forth. Notify the SOC team. And you can add anything you want to this. I could say, okay, notify a different team. I know in your environment, you have multi, uh, a multi-contractor environment. You could say, notify this particular uh, contractor if this alert happens. So these can be very specialized to your environment based on what you're looking for. Okay, let's go take a look at reports. We have a lot of different reports in the system. Here just happens to be one uh, security posture. So I can show, you know, I can have this sent out automatically to a, a list of people, you know, let's say management or whomever is important and needs to see this. It can be sent out once a week, once a month. So it can be programmed so that this, this report is going to go out on a regular basis to whoever I want. You can see here just a lot of good information, top hosts with alerts, top users with alerts, location, you know, gra geographical location, and then at the bottom, you actually get a list of all the alerts that show, let me go into administration here. I wanna show you that the system can be configured to, you can go in and you can say, okay, any individual, I can add a new individual and I can specify what things I want them to get, right? I want them to get SOC reports, mediation reports. I want them to get major alerts, critical alerts, whatever it might be. You can program the system to say, Always, always give this person this event when it happens. So the alerts will happen as, as soon as the system has detected them, that'll go out to whomever you want to go out to. You can also you know, schedule the reports in here as well. That's a, a brief overview of the system. I hope that was helpful. And uh, thank you very much for your time.